Before starting my presentation, I would like to thank uh, UNESCO ISP and Kyoto University to uh, accept my paper submissions, especially Dr. Saran Chuya and also Professor Yamasaki. So this is a very small uh, case study uh, that we have conducted uh, on uh, Lower Songkran River Basin of Thailand uh, to see how the, the uh, river water quality varies from one uh, season to another season and, and also different location. So this is the, the uh, presentation outline. Uh, I will skip this one. Uh, the, the context, I think uh, it's much more easy for me because of uh, Dr. Marcelo that uh, the uh, river water quality monitoring program is very expensive because it uh, uh, takes a lot of uh, uh, cost um, and also involves a lot of uh, the uh, other resources like uh, human resources and also time. So you mentioned that uh, in, in Brazil uh, from 2020s uh, they are going to have almost 5,000 monitoring stations and 4,000 monitoring stations and uh, the operation budget is about uh, 5 million dollar per year. So it's a really huge amount of money. But the question is uh, whether we really need uh, the 4,000 monitoring station or whether we really uh, need to um, monitor the uh, different water quality parameters frequently. So uh, uh, there are a number of tools or techniques to see uh, uh, whether we can reduce the, uh, the number of sampling stations or whether we can reduce the, the frequency of the, the sampling of water quality variables. So uh, I would like to uh, uh, briefly introduce about the environment, uh, environment techniques which is also called the multivariate statistical techniques uh, that, uh, that um, provides us opportunity to see uh, how the uh, water quality varies from one location to another location and how the water quality varies from one um, season to another uh, season. So uh, there are different kind of uh, environment metric techniques such as cluster analysis, uh, principal component analysis, factor analysis, and uh, discriminant analysis. So these are all the statistical techniques used to determine uh, how the water quality varies within the season and, and within the locations. Uh, the general objective of uh, this study was to see uh, how the spatial and temporal uh, variation in surface water quality of the Lower Songkran River Basin in Thailand. And you can see uh, some of the specific objectives like uh, we want to know um, how the, uh, uh, the water quality varies from one sampling site to another sampling site and also from uh, one uh, uh, the season to another season. And also we want to see uh, um, whether there is an influence of the different uh, factors to the uh, water quality parameters of the Lower Sankran River. Uh, this is the study area and the uh, data we have used. Uh, in this map you can see uh, the uh, Lower Songkran River Basin which is uh, located in the northeast of Thailand and uh, this is about uh, 420 kilometers uh, long and also uh, regarded as one of the, uh, the uh, important uh, site uh, for the, uh, the wetland in, in uh, Thailand's uh, national uh, wetlands inventory. Um, you can see uh, the uh, different characteristics of the basin here, so I will not explain in detail. Um, uh, this is uh, one of the most important source of livelihood for the, the people uh, living in those uh, Lower Songkran uh, basin. And basically there are uh, five stations, uh, you can see from the upstream to the downstream the government of uh, Thailand, uh, which is Pollution Control Department, is uh, monitoring. Uh, these are the, uh, the number of water quality uh, variables and uh, the analytical methods used by the Pollution Control Department of Thailand. And uh, the data set we obtained uh, consists of the 15 years of data from 1995 to 2005. So it, it is almost about uh, 1,000 uh, observation points. Uh, 
this is the methodology we adopted for the uh, environmental technique analysis. Uh, uh, before, um, before we conducted the cluster analysis, discriminant analysis and principal component and factor analysis, uh, these all data uh, were subjected to test uh, for the suitability of data for these uh, techniques. For example, uh, KS techniques uh, to see uh, whether the data are uh, log normally distributed, uh, whether the sampling frequency are uh, ad adequate for the, uh, the principal component analysis and factor analysis, uh, similarly Bartlett uh, test. Uh, so uh, the data were subjected to all these tests and uh, finally uh, we uh, did the cluster analysis, uh, discriminant analysis and also the factor analysis and princip uh, principal component analysis. Uh, to determine the uh, the spatial and temporal variation of the uh, river water quality. Uh, these are uh, just the introduction about uh, different techniques, but there are uh, plenty of literatures uh, and other uh, documents available, so I'll try to skip. Uh, the cluster analysis try to group uh, the different object into a similar um, the cluster. So uh, within one cluster, uh, the object, the cases are similar, but between the cluster, uh, the cases are very much different. Uh, similarly, discriminant analysis, uh, it tries to discriminate the most important parameters between the season and also uh, between the locations. Uh, whereas the principal component analysis and factor analysis, uh, they try to uh, extract the, the parameters which are most uh, significantly are different from uh, the time and also the uh, locations. Um, so this is the uh, results and discussion part. Uh, uh, you can see this uh, the the table, which is the uh, summary table of the, uh, the all the seventeen water quality variables and uh, their range and and mean uh, uh, for the uh, fifteen years. Uh, so we can see from this uh, summary. Uh, the uh, water quality of the uh, the lower Song Kham River basin is uh, uh, very good quality, uh, and uh, the hydrochemistry of this uh, river is uh, within the range of the tropical rivers. And uh, I also try to see uh, whether the uh, water quality compliance uh, with the irrigation water quality standard uh, from the pollution control department and. Uh, uh, we can see that all the values uh, are within the range of the irrigation water quality standard and also it is uh, suitable for the aquatic biodiversity. Um, so we uh, use the cluster analysis techniques to see um, how, the, um, how the water quality varies uh, from uh, one location to another location. So we considered uh, five stations and uh, the cluster analysis uh, uh, you let the uh, three clusters uh, and each cluster has the similar water quality characteristics. So you can see in this uh, figure, uh, the cluster one is located uh, in the Middle Eastern region and it, it has uh, two sampling stations. Uh, cluster two, uh, it has uh, the two stations uh, which is uh, uh, near the river mouth uh, and also near the uh, Mekong river and uh, cluster three, uh, it is the only one stations uh, located in the upstream. So it means that uh, uh, within each cluster, the water quality values are the similar, but between the cluster, the, uh, there is a difference in the water quality values. So the, uh, I already described that uh, uh, what are the uh, sampling locations for the different clusters and we also have the background information of the, uh, the different uh, uh, water quality monitoring stations location. Uh, we also analyze the uh, temporal variation in river water quality. So uh, we decided to choose the wet season and dry season. So um, we try to see uh, between the wet season and dry season what are the, uh, the water quality variables that changes significantly. So we employed the uh, discriminant analysis uh, and uh, um, the results was that out of the 17 water quality variables, uh, the uh, 9 uh, water quality 
variables varies uh, significantly between two seasons, that is the wet season and, and dry season. So uh, uh, it, it has some kind of uh, the, the implication for the future water quality monitoring program uh, uh, because uh, within the season uh, only nine water quality varies significantly uh, so it means that uh, the other water quality uh, variables uh, doesn't change much from the one season to another season. So probably uh, the, the uh, number of water quality variables can be reduced from 17 to 9 or the, the frequency of the monitoring of the water quality variables uh, which do not change significantly can be reduced. Um, so this is the, uh, the box plot of uh, these uh, nine water quality uh, variables. Uh, um, I will just explain one or two. You can see here the box plot of the uh, water temperature uh, in wet season and dry season. So you can see uh, the the variation in the water temperature in wet season is from about 25 to uh, 32 degree centigrade. But in case of dry season, it is uh, from 22 to uh, almost 32. So there is a large variation of the uh, water temperature uh, between the uh, wet season and, and dry season. Okay, uh, that was the, uh, the, the variation between the two seasons, but we also employed the discriminant analysis techniques uh, to see uh, what are the most uh, uh, the important uh, water quality variables that changes between three locations, which has been identified by the uh, cluster analysis and uh, we found that uh, there are seven water quality variables uh, which are uh, uh, significantly different between one location to another location and uh, these are the uh, seven water quality variables out of the, the 17 water quality variables that pollution control department is uh, monitoring and uh, this also has implication on the future water quality uh, monitoring program uh, for example uh, there are uh, three locations uh, and, and um, 17 water quality parameters, but we can reduce the number of water quality variables from 17 to 7. But of course, uh, it depends on the objective of the, the uh, monitoring program also. So this is again uh, the box plot of the different water quality variables between uh, different uh, locations, uh, which are in upstream, middle stream and, and lower stream. Similarly, uh, we also employed the principal component analysis and factor analysis to see uh, which are the most significant uh, parameters uh, that changes uh, from one season to another season and also from one location to another location. So we employed this, uh, the principal component analysis and, and factor analysis uh, for the 17 water quality variables of the uh, 15 years and uh, we found uh, these six uh, uh, factors, which is also called the very factors coming from the, uh, the uh, factor analysis. Um, so these six uh, factors, uh, um, for example, the factor one, uh, they have the highest uh, variation of the water quality of uh, total uh, variation and uh, the corresponding water quality parameters are shown here. So similarly, there are uh, the other water quality variables that correspond to uh, uh, the respective uh, vary factors which changes uh, significantly uh, during the uh, 15 years of time. So this is uh, similarly uh, for uh, the uh, water quality uh, variables uh, which are in the middle stream region and uh, finally this is for the uh, lower stream region. your time. Okay, so this is the last slide. Uh, so what I would like to conclude is, so based on the analysis of the 17 water quality variables for the 15 years, uh, the cluster analysis group, the five sampling points into the three clusters. So probably um, we can choose only one, one station from the three locations. So the number of sampling uh, site can be reduced to three, five from three. Uh, similarly, discriminant analysis uh, shows that there are some of the uh, the water quality variables that changes significantly between the uh, season and, and location. So we can choose those water quality variables for the future monitoring uh, programs. And the very factors uh, 
from the factor analysis uh, indicated that um, the different sources of the, the uh, uh, pollution into the uh, river system. Sorry, uh, because of the time constraint, I, I could not uh, explain in detail. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Thank you very much. That's a very important question. Uh, before we conduct the, the, uh, the different statistical tests, uh, we also employ uh, different uh, tests, uh, for example, Keshenweir, Balkin test, Kolmogorov test, and also Bartlett's test to see whether these uh, uh, variables are correlated, correlated. So we found that they were not correlated, so we uh, continued uh, for the. Thank you. Yeah, it's a question. <laughs> Very much, Gary. And um, so, if those uh, discriminating factors are the main water quality parameters, uh, in which uh, situation or in which monitoring purpose this uh, method or approach can be most uh, applicable and usable? Yeah, that's a very uh, important question. Actually, this is uh, the uh, monitoring program by government, uh, the Pollution Control Department. So, it is a routine kind of uh, monitoring. So this is uh, for the routine water quality analysis. But uh, if you have some uh, special purpose like emergency situation, probably this is not the valid. So this is only for the uh, routine kind of uh, monitoring. Okay, thank you.